welcome to my improv making of the Fairbanks International Airport at its peak 100% capacity and in this case during summertime business. Again, flights operate seasonally or they offer flights year-round. And I'll explain that in a little bit. Fairbanks International Airport has six gates. I'll go into detail about those gates. I'll go into more detail about itself. The Fairbanks International Airport can be reached to 90% of the industrialized world and is roughly about a nine hour flight. Explain a little bit more. Over here at gates one and two are Alaska Airlines. This particular, these two particular planes in the new livery of Alaska Airlines over here at gate one would be, in this case, a 5.30 departure flight, flight number 86 with nonstop service to Ted Stevens Anchorage International Airport. This flight over here was at one point flight number 126, a 6 a.m. departure to Seattle Tacoma International Airport. These two planes basically arrive in Fairbanks at midnight and 2 a.m. respectively, and they sit in Fairbanks International Airport for about three to four hours, depending upon the flight that you take, and they both leave for the day. Alaska Airlines uses gates one and two, and uses gate three as a backup for if there was a mechanical issue with the plane. But gate three is used by Shared Services Alaska, which is a joint venture between BP Alaska and ConocoPhillips Alaska, two well-known oil companies working in the state of Alaska. And in this depiction of this video, I am using an Alaska 737-700 aircraft to depict the type of aircraft that they use. They use a Boeing 737-700 plane to ferry and take the oil workers to and from. Now, Shared Services offers a flight from Fairbanks on every Thursday. They offer an almost daily flight out of Anchorage, Alaska. So in this depiction of this video, it'd be gate three would be used by shared services and used by a 737-700. Gate four is used by Delta. It is used by Delta year round with um, nonstop service to Seattle. But in this case, I have a 757-200 aircraft that Delta uses primarily for flights between Minneapolis, St. Paul, Minnesota, and Fairbanks, Alaska. Now you can catch a 757 to Anchorage, Alaska, but if you're looking or starting your, your visit in Alaska and you're flying out of Minneapolis, chances are you'll be flying in a 757. It's a little over a five hour flight between Minneapolis, St. Paul, and Fairbanks. And there have been instances where the 757 flies to Fairbanks and lo and behold there's a mechanical issue and usually this plane has to sit at gate number four for the time being. And so gate number five would be used as the backup for Delta. In this case it'd be a Delta 737-900. It'd be offering service to Seattle Tacoma International Airport. With the rivalry of Delta Airlines and Alaska Airlines at Seattle Tacoma, it seems that with every one flight that Alaska Airlines has, Delta wants to provide customers with another, basically another option to get to their destination. So this 737-900, for this purposes of this video, could be a uh, flight 2908, which would be a mid-afternoon seasonal flight to Seattle. Or it could be a, a red-eye flight that leaves just after midnight 
to go to Seattle. Gate number six over here occupied by United. This United flight off is only operates seasonally, which would be May through September. So like the 757, it operates during the summer months. But this United flight operates between Fairbanks, Alaska and Chicago O'Hare International Airport. So if you're really lucky to either fly out of Fairbanks, Alaska to Minneapolis or Chicago, you're really lucky because you don't have to go through Seattle. But it's a five and a half hour, maybe close to a six hour flight, depending upon the weather and whatnot. But United occupies gate six during the summer months. The layout would mean you have your four term gates over here. And if necessary, gates five and six can be used for international flights. Now, gate six over here would be the main international gate, seeing as how the gate goes straight to customs. Besides United, Delta, and Alaska Airlines, Fairbanks International Airport also offers charter flights. They offer charter flights from Air North, an airline in Canada. They offer charter flights between Fairbanks, Alaska, and Dawson City in the Yukon in Canada. During the summer months, uh, every Thursday, Condor Airlines has a flight that leaves Anchorage, Alaska, makes the hour flight up to Fairbanks to pick up passengers. And then from Fairbanks International Airport, it flies a little over nine hours to Frankfurt, Germany, and it offers a nonstop flight there. The, the catch-22 with that flight is, is that you can only leave Fairbanks International Airport and fly to Frankfurt, Germany. The catch is, is that when Condor flies from Frankfurt, it goes straight to Anchorage, Alaska, because that's where most people want to go. And then during the winter time, during the Aurora season, you can expect a charter flight from Narita, Tokyo, Japan, um, mainly to service customers there that want to see the Aurora Borealis or the Northern Lights. Now Japan Airlines uses, they have used a 787 Dreamliner which I tried getting on the internet but have failed to get but it's currently not in my budget to get just yet but they mainly use a 767 aircraft for those charters. The Condor flight uses a 767 as well. And then over there, at a refueling stop, would be the Travis Air Force Base C-5. It's just here to refuel. It's probably got the presidential motorcade for President Trump. Go Trump. If you got a problem with Trump, then you're not American. I'm sorry to say that, but hey, that's life. It's 2018, and this would be a depiction of Fairbanks International Airport at its fullest capacity. And then as a bonus, got a couple more planes that I have on my resume. Got a couple of 737-800s, got old livery, 75 year anniversary, Starliner 75, and of course, honoring those who serve with badass winglets. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you feel like leaving a comment, feel free to do so. If you have any questions, just feel free to voice your opinion. I'm very open to hearing what you have to say. I'm a very open-minded person. And if you have any further questions, I'm sure sure the internet has most of the answers. But I thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. 
and if your ventures ever take you to Alaska, feel free to hit me up, and I would hope to see you in the near future. Again, thanks for watching, and hope you enjoyed it.